So the tricky part here is that we have to start doing some calculus and taking derivatives. So you have to be very clear in your mind about the difference between the level of the function and the derivative of the function. And we have to keep in mind that you can't take a derivative until you've first written down an ex a algebraic expression for the level. Um, just like in the previous example, remember we had to write down an algebraic expression for b, like b equals 5 minus 3t, before we could take its derivative. Here we have to write down an algebraic expression for the area. You had to invent a variable of width that they didn't even mention here, so that then you could take this derivative. And then we had to have the insight that the velocity here told us the derivative of the wind. Well, no one ever gets that the first time around, so hey, it's good that we got a chance to talk about that. And that's uh, down here as well. So here at the bottom of the flowchart, I tried to talk about what to do when the magnetic field is changing or when the area is changing. Well, the key thing is that when the area is changing, the derivative of the width with respect to time is the velocity. Um, both of the questions from the, uh, the practice sessions that the TAs ran, they were both about changing areas. So there's a good chance that if you saw a Faraday's Law question, it might be something like this. OK, okay well, uh, as usual, I'd recommend trying to redo these problems. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.